So we got the dash in. Uh, really happy with the fitment. Um, I like how I managed to sort of get it around the roll bars. Um, it looks, looks good now. Yeah, just need to relocate the whole car so that we can fit the seat. So what we're thinking about doing is cutting this part of the roll cage out um, <laughs> and then fitting the seat back there. <laughs> German Auto Works, where in just five weeks, we took a stock M2 to this beast of a race car. We've got seven weeks to complete this project, so if you want to see how we took it from this to this, stay tuned. Hello and welcome back to German Auto Works, where today is a very exciting day. We're going to pick up the car after it's been painted. Just come back down to KG's Classic to pick up the car and it looks amazing. This is Kevin, the man behind the gun. He's done a rad job. Here she is, looking fantastic. So glossy inside. Usually uh, people might go for a matte finish where I quite like to go for a glossy finish. It's a lot harder to paint, but it absolutely looks killer in the car. Uh, we've got Joel back here, starting to put the first few things inside the car. Uh, so we're gonna be situating our fire extinguisher. This one's made by Sparco. Um, we usually use OMP in the UK. Uh, but I actually used the Sparco one on the last build and it was it came out really nice, so yeah, excited for that. Um, then we're going to be running our tubing down the side of the car, so we'll actually roll this out and get it into all of the nice bends. Then we'll be securing it with some P-clips and rivets. That will go down. Uh, there'll be some nozzles, two nozzles for the driver, one for the passenger and then three in the engine bay. Once we've done that, we're going to start fit in the dash. Obviously now with all of these bars involved, it's gonna be difficult to have our dash cut around that. We have already cut it for our main uh, stays here, the front stays, but we haven't done it for these pit props because they weren't there at that time. So a little bit of fettling work to do there. Uh, I can't wait to see our doors actually on the car because these carbon fiber trims are sick. I love them. I love everything about them. The way that, you know, usually when you fit these things, stuff doesn't really fit but look at this it just fits in there so nice straight from oem straight from the m2 straight into this looks absolutely perfect i also cannot wait to see that sunset orange laid in that x perfectly like the guys did so yeah super excited stay tuned So we're just installing the uh, fire extinguisher plumbing now. Um, I try and make sure that all of my P-clips are the perfect distance apart. And like we've added a little bit of clear down here, just where the pipe's possibly gonna rub in the future. We've sort of protected that with a little tiny bit of PPF. Um, so we're just gonna head on now and kind of lay around this car with, with my, uh, my my shoes off <laughs> <laughs> and uh, get the uh, nozzles in and um, it's gonna look sweet. So 
so we got the dash in. Uh, really happy with the fitment. Um, I like how I managed to sort of get it around the roll bars. Um, it looks, looks good now. Yeah, just need to relocate the whole car so that we can fit the seat. So what we're thinking about doing is cutting this part of the roll cage out um, <laughs> and then fitting the seat back there. <laughs> oh, seriously, uh, what we're doing now is working on getting this dashboard into where it needs to be. We did cut it around these front bars already so you can see that we've made the notches but at that point the uh, pit prop wasn't in uh, and this X bar wasn't in either so we'll have to kind of make it work. So the joys of putting in an OEM dash around a roll cage is that sometimes uh, you can't get it in in one. This is the first time uh, and that's because it's a really really tight fitment and um, we didn't have any sort of guidance or schematics on where this pit prop was going to go because we didn't know where the door bars were going to land and where the door bars land are different it would make the pit prop land in a different place so we've modified the dash what we're going to do is notch it like we've done here so that it fits really nice and then we'll uh, reconnect this piece to the original dash um, so you can see here why we wouldn't have ever got it in it's so tight but what we'll do is we'll get our notch here uh, and then we'll insert it into this and just goes in like that so we still need to take a little bit more but if we look from the front on this side you can see how that's going to notch in nicely around that and then we'll actually be able to put the original cover on the edge here. So once that's notched out enough, this is going to meet and it's going to look sick. You can see we're just, I don't know, 10 mil off at the moment. We just need to pull that notch in a little bit deeper and then that's going to fit up there. And then we cut it along this line. So once that's back together, you're not going to see that. It's going to look real nice. Um, okay, so Obviously this looks like a bit of a weird setup, but it's working for me. Tools that I just find comfy. Um, we've got kind of like a gritted hole cutter. Um, a bit like an angle grinder, but on a hole cutter. Which is quite nice because it, it just, it doesn't snag the material. Um, so I can just ease up on it in here. And, and this is a inch and a half uh, hole cutter. So that's the same size as the bar that we're trying to make the notch for so essentially i'm just going to push this along and uh, have it sneak up on my line and then we'll just fit it to the car and hopefully she's real nice out here putting on the uh, CS Racing Splitter uh, which requires a little bit of uh, modifying so we're uh, just in the process of doing that now looks nice obviously from the race car kind of fits the original lines really nicely around here and they give a little bit of a flick looks nice nice piece
Okay, that is the loom all taped up. Um, it's not taped up 100%, reason being because when we actually put it in the car, we'll be making some small modifications and finishing off the tape in there. But what you can see here is that we've got a lovely snake down the side of the car. You'll notice that only the right hand side of the car now has any wiring. We've taken everything out of the left hand side of the car, we've got rid of it. Um, anything that we needed to run down to the front and back of the car is now running on the right hand side which will leave the driver's side really nice and clean you won't see any wire in there at all um, yeah just gonna get it in the car now and um, start plugging things back in all right so the other jobs that we've been doing for the last uh, couple of days is the front end of the car um, so we've installed a CS racing front splitter which is from the factory. We've also installed these uh, brake ducts here on the bumper, which are from factory. That looks mm -hmm. mm. oh sh mm. <laughs> <laughs> That looks really good. Um, and we've also installed some aero catches to the bonnet uh, because obviously race car. Um, the way we've done it, I'm quite happy with it. Literally just flicks off, flicks down, fitment's perfect. Just makes it easier when you're at the track. You, know, you can just flick those up you're already in the bonnet. You don't need to worry about pulling any cords. Someone could be strapped up inside the car uh, and you can access the bonnet without getting them out of the way. As simple as that. So happy with that. Front end's looking really good. We've also added our uh, M toe strap. So just a nice little touch there. I'm just really happy with how this car's coming together. I'm really excited to get the doors on. I'm excited to get the wiring loom in. And then I'm excited to get it running because I want to go to the track. It is crazy! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can we get our socks to match in the morning? No. <laughs> is that Shakespeare? Just uh, reading Joel's excuses for being slow as mm -hmm. <laughs> six. Yeah. yeah! Okay, bright and early this morning. We've got lots to do today, including this, which is the heater box. And we're putting it in. <laughs> so we were busy yesterday uh, reinstalling our wiring loom into the car. You can see that it's all in now, looking nice and tidy and taped up running in the original plastics, but also running down only the passenger side. Uh, and then just comes across this bench seat here in a much thinner loom than what is uh, what comes out of the factory. Um, and then if you have a look at the back here, we've been busy. So we have started installing some of the control units, the fuse boxes. We've uh, installed the rear bumper now with the rear lights. Um, so it's starting to look like a car again, we've got some aperture seals on. We've also got the party piece of the car which is the carbon roof. Now this is a factory uh, M Performance carbon fibre roof. There is a big difference between aftermarket carbon roofs and factory roofs. Um, that being the weave quality. To be honest, there's no better quality than BMW's own carbon stuff. So that is all I will use if I can get away with it. They never, ever, ever have a wavy weave. It's always absolutely perfect. And if you wanna see how these things are made, then there's a great video on YouTube, which we'll put a link below to the video. And you'll kind of understand why the BMW roofs and the carbon stuff is so much better than some guy in a shed making it. Uh, they have huge machines and yeah, it's kind of the only carbon that I'll use. So people with a keen eye might have noticed that we actually used uh, the CS Racing FEM cover in this build. Um, so that relocates the FEM from being on the side of the vehicle uh, to into the footwell, which then will have our carbon uh, foot plates come up in front of that. The reason why we've used that is that it's quite nice where they relocate the FEM. You don't see it on the side of the car now. It's tucked away behind that cover and it's a motorsport part, so I quite enjoy using those. <laughs> um, the rest of the plan today is going to be to have the heater box installed for the final time 
uh, we'll have the dash bar installed and then we're actually going to get the dash in for the last time and just fet all those fitments so that it fits really nice and then we can get our centre console in and it's starting to look like a car again. The halfway point in this build, I just want to say thank you to anybody who has been supporting us and will be supporting us in the future. Uh, it means a lot. It's the first time we've done something like this and I hope the content has been great. Uh, we've enjoyed ourselves and uh, yeah, let's jump into a time lapse and build this car back up. So we're extending some wires here, uh, these are the wires for the start stop button and we're just making sure that there's uh, continuity because they actually use the same wire twice, the same brown wire um, and obviously when we're extending it down to our uh, new location for the start stop button we need to make sure that the wires are all wired correctly 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 hello hello so the start stop button is being relocated from where it sits in the dash to somewhere around here on the center console and that's the reason why we're extending these wires because when you're all strapped in and you're kind of sitting quite far back you may not be able to reach that button that easy so it'll be much better if it's down in the center console which is you know race car <laughs> Aim Technology MXG one point two Strata. What's that? Don't know, that's what it says on the box. <laughs> 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 this is our dash, um, we've used these before, so it's easy for us to just code them. We've already got our presets, we've already worked it out for hours and hours and hours and hours of how to get it all to work. So we will be using it again and they're, they're quite nice, quite a nice product. Um, I have used other products like the ECU Master ADU. Um, which I have to say from a customization point of view, I do prefer, but from a aesthetic point of view, this is the best looking one. Really nice kind of metal finish to it. But the best part about these is that from BMW Motorsport, we have the inserts that were made for the dash, which I'll get out in just a sec. Here it is, uh, and it's from Not sure if I can read that. I start again. <laughs> What's the company? What's the company called? Oh, I actually can't mm. work that out. What that says. Hint Steiner. Right, so the part is from BMW Motorsport. Here it is. Now it takes a lot of designing to get things like this to fit nice, which is why we use them. So, essentially, this plops straight in there. Look at that. And then that will just fall straight into the dash, looking lovely. So I get a lot of questions about the way that this fits and the accessibility to the buttons. You can see here that this piece uh, fits quite tight to the buttons so you wouldn't actually be able to press them. Well, that's fine because we don't use them. What we do instead is we've programmed our iDrive controller with some special coding done by my brother, um, which took us a long time to work out. And we actually can control that dash with the iDrive controller using our special coding. And that completely eliminates the need to use those buttons on the dash.
Try number two. Next time, we'll be finishing off our fire extinguisher system. We'll be installing our carbon fiber roof and getting our plastic windows fitted to the car. We'll be getting our dash fitment absolutely perfect and installing the Drexler LSD into the rear of the car that's gonna completely transform the way the car delivers its power. A lot of our video viewers are not yet subscribers, so please, if you like this content, like and subscribe. Catch you next time.